Hello, friends, and welcome to the 2023 Lord of the Rings Museum on Boundary Lane video update. We'll start this as we always do from the exterior of the room, kind of looking in. We'll open the door here and enter into the room. You know, this year, uh, <clears throat> you know, there isn't as many new pieces as there has been in years past. This year, actually, I took probably more pieces out than have been added since last year. But, uh, you know, we'll get a tour and uh, we'll see what you, what everyone thinks of uh, how it's come together. You know, we'll start out like I normally do with kind of a full, quick panoramic view of the uh, the whole room here. And then we'll, we'll go and uh, get a little closer look at everything. Um, there are some new pieces, obviously, um, but the majority of the pieces have been here before. Um, a lot of the stuff on this side is relatively similar. That's a new guy right there. We'll look at him shortly. Uh, I did a lot of changing in this area as well. But... Uh, I would say, uh, you know, I, I've come to kind of realize that maybe less is more with some of these displays. You know, you want to display everything you have, but it ends up causing some issues and cluttering things up. So, uh, you know, I, I just, I made some choices to just kind of take some stuff out. And, you know, I really uh, have been uh, concentrating on buying more custom pieces this last couple, you know, year or so, maybe, you know, a little longer. But um, I really enjoy highlighting these pieces and, you know, highlighting these artists because, uh, you know, it's cool. It's cool to see all these people coming in and spending all this time making these unique pieces and, I enjoy having their artwork and talking to them and interacting with them. And so I definitely want to display their work here. So, all right, we'll, we'll start here. Um, you know, this is identical to what it was last year. It's the, uh, you know, the, the center point being a Mike Shea prop, Witch King, um, Twilight Witch King crown which is an amazing piece. I would say it's my favorite custom piece I have. And then, uh, you know, it's banked by a couple of the Weta statues. It's got the cool art print in the back. Big fan. You know, I got the, I got this standee. I just love this thing. I've been looking for one for a while and I found some guy that had a, this and Saruman, but I, there's no real space for Saruman in here, but I, I like having these guys protecting the, uh, the safe and the uh, you know the party business anyways moving on um, once again most of this stuff is very similar if not identical to how it has been in the past but we'll kind of briefly go over it it's like a little Dane area the Gandalf and I got the uh, Dole door 130th set which is very cool and you know I still got some Eagle Moss Lord of the Rings stuff in there to add some more detail uh, this Palantir is new I think I don't know if it was in the last video I don't believe it was and then the base uh, both are custom pieces uh, the base was made by Robert Cleet and the uh, the Palantir was made by a man in England I just can't think of his name currently so I apologize for that but it's a very cool piece I got the crown. I got these uh, these awesome stands. These are dis retail display stands that were for uh, the uh, No Admittance bookends and the the Lord of the Rings trilogy 
one you know book that was all three of the books combined in one and they would have this displayed at like a barnes and noble or you know another bookseller at that at the time of the movies so i was able to get these two currently i have them one displaying the united cutlery elf helm and the i have warrior helm and uh also this uh, amazing Andy Me custom piece. It's very cool. It's got the watcher in the water in there. Look at him. I like it. I got the door. Got a lot of goo. Cool. It's very cool. Then the Hallamau Cave Troll Corner. Not nothing's changed there. He's still holding it down. The Hobbit Center here. Have all the uh, larger Hobbit pieces. Flanked in the middle with the uh, Rogerio Custom Goblin King, who's the only person to make this piece in one six scale, and it's a good one. If you if you can find it, I definitely recommend getting it. And then uh, that also is newer, the uh, Ark and Stone with the display stand. That's also made by the same artist from England that uh, made the uh, Palantir. Once again, I'm sorry, I can't think of your name right now. I'm sure someone will be able to in the comments. And then uh, that's my uncle on the left, my grandfather on the right. The Balrog. That's a custom piece from a man in, in Russia. Once again, I, I don't know who I don't know much more about him than that. Uh, and that's my grandfather's library. And uh, one of his decanters. He was a big Charles Dickens collector. His name was Joseph Smith. Anyways, uh, he's part of the, you know, he's primary one of the primary reasons this collection exists. So, got to pay tribute. Um, and once again, you know, not a lot has changed on that wall. And then I just got this uh, Gladriel on the White Council from Weta. So she sits atop the speaker. These Hildebrandt prints and all this is the same. Um, and then, you know, the, uh, the Gandalf's the same. I really like this piece a lot. Now this guy is new. And this is a very, very cool piece. It's a bronze piece. It's also made of marble and wood. It is called Good Pipe by an artist named Scott Goss. I have looked everywhere to find information on this piece and found nothing. It says it's from 2002 on the back. And it says it's one of 30 pieces made. So if you know anything about it, please feel, please reach out. I'd really like to know more because it's awesome. It's, it's definitely too cool uh, to just be, you know, a random piece. I, I, I hope maybe he did a series of these. It would be great to know because I would love to seek out the rest if there were additional pieces. Anyways, I'll, get, I'll go around it a little bit and you guys can see a little more. Oh. Just got a great, great look. I really, it's, it, this may be, this is up there with one of my favorite pieces down too. I just love it. And then we got this guy here again still, the old Thandril on throne. I mean, I, I can, I have so many other pieces that aren't displayed. I have the new Infinity Studios Ring Raid bust, and I constant, I contemplated changing this out, but I didn't. I just, I just really like this piece here when I enter the room so it still remains and I moved the uh, sideshow premium four of my Sauron to here and I'll show you why here in a minute as we come on over here to this it's you know kind of like my ring wraiths um, and in the center now where Sauron used to be I have made this display of the uh sorry about the lighting here you know f 
fix this display of the Badali ring collection, making it more accessible and easier to look at the rings. So we got the, uh, this is a, the top ring is actually a noble 10 care one ring. And then the rest are the Badali rings. These are the, the three Alvin rings, the seven Dwarven rings, and the nine rings of men. And, uh, so, I mean, I, I, I just, I just thought it'd be cool to, to bring these out and give them a little more exposure when people came to check them out. I changed this up a little bit too, taking a couple pieces out of here. And in this case, the top part, I added the Strider Sword to the Mini Swords, but the top shelf is pretty much the same as it was. Oh no, I added that back there as well. The, uh, that 3D Lord of the Rings Fellowship piece. But the remainder of these are the same. Then the bottom shelf, it's also relatively similar. I kind of spaced things out a little differently. And then I brought the King LSR Tomb by Kyle into here, which I think is pretty cool. So it, it's, it's kind of a good, good display down here now. Just, you know, change it up a little bit, mix it up. It's kind of, it's kind of fun to be able to do that. And every time I move one of these cases, I get real excited. And this, this piece here, this, uh, this wood burnt map of Middle Earth, sorry, there's some shadowing. It's really well done. It was done, I think, by this company. It was a one person operation, Fantasy Woodworks. I think the man was from Ukraine. But sadly, he got COVID and, uh, you know, it hurt his lungs real bad. And they told him to stop making the wood burnings because it was hard on his lungs. But. I'm glad to be able to have one of his representations. This is one of the first things he did, I believe. And it's very well done. This map of Middle Earth, I enjoy showing it off. And talking about it to other people. This is another Kyle. Exclusive piece, or custom piece, I mean. And then I have the... Just got this guy back from Rick Can 2. He fixed the whip and it's looking good. And then this custom piece by Dr. Malcolm, really, really good. Very, very happy to have this in the collection. And it also has a light feature, door lights up. Very cool piece, found that, you know, through the Flame of Odin forum. And then there we got the Balrog flaming up. You know, I, there was a lot of stuff on this table. I used to have, I, I had the Moria troll by Weta. It just was too big and dominating the space. So he is, he's gone for now. Now we move over to this table. This is pretty much the same as it was. I did, I did add this. This this is a really cool thing that I found. You know, the uh, the Lord of the Rings. Three rings for the elven kings under the sky, seven for the dwarf lords in the halls of stone, nine for the mortal man doomed to die, one for the dark lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie, one ring to rule them all, one ring to find them, one ring to bring them all, and in the darkness bind them in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. J.R.R. Tolkien. I mean, if that that's... I love that. It gets me excitable every time. It's just, I just, I just love, I just love how that was written. It's one of my favorite, favorite things. So I always thought that was cool. And I used to have that behind the rings, but I thought it went better there. And then I have the, the Toy Biz, uh, Helm's Deep Gimli collection. I have 10 of them in here on display. And then the R1 and Ash, Ash, Asphaloth Red Box. For those of you unfamiliar, uh, my first collecting uh, experience in Lord of the Rings was the uh, Toy Biz Collection line. So that's my tribute to it. And hopefully someday I can display the whole collection again if I get enough space. 
this is identical the way it used to be same here and then these are heisey horses this is actually a, a tribute to my grandma this was her collection and i keep them in this window you can kind of see it but this is the first time i ever filmed this a video for the collection in the day because i kind of wanted to catch this but it's not really showing through exactly how i'd like but when the sun shines through this window uh, it really makes a really cool light uh you know running through the, the the different colored horses it really makes it look really interesting in here but i'm sure you can uh picture it looking at how colorful the the horses are anyways moving on this guy this corner is the same now Gollum, he just keeps acquiring random attire from different characters so he started with boromir's horn and then i got this uh the cloak, the uh, the the wool cloak from New Zealand, the the Elven cloak, um, and he's got his brooch now, and then Bomber's hat was just you know an added bonus. So he's uh, he's living it up over here, and he also has uh, this Elven bow. He's just, he's just having a great time now. And then over here, I had a bunch of the. Uh, the hobbit holes and it was just too cluttered so i just got rid of them for now so now i'm focusing more in on these amazing andy me pieces these are just some of the greatest stuff he's done i love it um if you have a chance to get these i would not hesitate i mean this this awesome door just great pieces really and th this also has a light feature Let's see if i can turn this on easily boom just great it just makes it feel even you know better and, and at night like sometimes i'll turn it on and you know i have this different you know lighter lighter lights that i can turn on in here and it just adds like a cool feature to the to the piece this one is awesome too it just it's just great sam and frodo and then the, this weta piece is really good too i do have the full version but i just don't have room to display it in a way that it looks good so the smaller one does a great job and has a lot of the amazing detail but what would make this even better is if into darkness would make his uh, life-size version uh, available for uh, purchase because i know a couple guys including myself to be number one number two on that list because uh i would love to have a life-size version of this in here Moving on, you know, this is still similar. The uh, premium format Gandalf, and then the middle of the Boromir. Now, these uh, these car wooden carvings are made by Max Daddy Wood Carvings. The guy's name is Mark uh, on Etsy. Real guy, real nice guy. I, I just love it. I had him, I saw him make a couple of these, and then uh, I asked him if he'd make me the full fellowship, and, and he did. And we were able to uh, get him here and set them up i mean obviously they're not movie accurate but I, I just love them and they remind me of the 80s and it gives they're just a great feel so if you're interested in them uh, you can find him on etsy under max daddy wood carvings then uh two of these these are just some of the best stuff i have this is the noldorn dagger and scabbard from shea props and then this is the uh, Boromir scabbard. And this piece is actually uh, the first one he ever made. This was the first scabbard. And he wanted me to uh, be able to showcase it. And, you know, I just love having, you know, some, you know, some of the history of Shea props in my collection. As well as, uh, you know, him being able, or him thinking of and wanting me to have it too. It's just great. He he's a good friend of mine, as a, and uh, he, the pieces he makes are beyond what even the full uh, the full licensed and manufactured back companies can can make. So I'll move this over here for a second. This as well. We'll pull this out. You can check out the blade a little bit. It's just a beautiful piece detailed. He spends months and months and months prepar preparing for these. 
um, in preparation and then uh, makes a very limited number of them. He just recently auctioned off this set on eBay. It sold for 2500 bucks. So his popularity is rising. Be great if he can make, you know, get more made, but I know that's tough. This book is actually the Red Book of Westmarch by Magnolia Props, but I had him make it into a guest book for me. Middle Earth Goods. This is a picture of myself. And this is the guest book for my museum. Anybody that comes here, you know, um, they date it and sign it. You can put your address and comment, whatever you want. And then I have this cool, this is a Montegrappa. It's an Italian company, very famous pen court company. And they made this Lord of the Rings pen. And, you know, we pull it out and it makes you feel real special when you come here, I hope. And uh, it's just a fun thing we do when you come here. And I call this book the Guest Book of Westmarch. So there's that. And in here, everything's pretty much the same. I better speed this up. We're getting deep into the 20s here. So, uh, most of this is also the same. You know, I cleaned up some stuff. I took some smaller stuff out of here to try to make this a lot more fluid. And I think it looks pretty good that way. I'll go down in here just to give you a quick glimpse. This is, or glimpse. This is all the, uh, the dwarfs from the Hobbit. Then we got the center piece. That a sealed door is probably the best, one of the best wet up pieces they've made. It was a great one. And then this part over here is the same as well. We have the uh, fellowship. And then, you know, this great depiction of uh, Hobbiton. I love it. Obviously, I don't have all the Hobbit holes out anymore, but I think it gives a good depiction. Without making it, uh, you know, crazily cluttered. So then, moving on down back here, you know, this is pretty much all the same again. We have the uh, the shadow box. This is a real cool piece I got. It was obviously a custom made piece. I I don't know who made it, but the guy I got it from was from California, and. Uh, it's just a real great piece. I'm glad I have it. And then moving on, we have the tree beard. This is the two towers table. And uh, there's an interesting new piece I have received. This is the, uh, this ram head was actually, uh, this is a, you know, um, a cast piece from a sculpted piece by uh, the artist Heather Kilgore from the, uh, it was actually from a, a daybed that Eowyn lays in in the Two Towers movie. It was painted black and on the daybed. But anyways, I was able to acquire this one that was not painted. But, I mean, it wasn't in the movie. But it, 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 it's a, it's, I think it's about the closest thing I have to something from the movie. Anyways, I thought that was kind of a cool addition. Um, then we have the uh, one six scale tree beard. Some other cool uh, two towers pieces. None of this has really changed over here. And then up here we have the uh, the Shea prop. This is the Boromir dagger, which goes with that scabbard. I just wanted to kind of highlight it over there. Maybe I'll put it with this up here. I'm not sure yet. Uh, and Glamdring and blue scabbard. And then we'll go look at the, the top middle case. Now this case, I cleared it off because I wanted this to kind of be the John Howe center. You know, uh, all three of the pieces up here are John Howe. The The first one here is uh, the Weta John Howe Fox Bronze Smog. This one was relatively rare because it has the wood base. It's a polystone piece with the wood base. Many of them have the, the uh, fake marble base, which I'll show you which is what the other one is, the, the Eowyn versus the Nazgul. But this piece was in very bad shape. Wings broken off, wood was heavily damaged. And uh, my buddy Rick Can too came to the rescue and he resurrected it, brought it back to life. It's a beautiful piece. And uh, I'm glad that I was able to save it and have it on display now. 
And then this has been here for a while, the Yuman uh, Witch King. Beautiful piece, another John Howe. Just awesome. Everybody is really kind of been drawn to this piece, you know, since it's been in the spot. And then this one used to be in the case behind me. This is the uh, AON versus the Nazgul. I've had this one, be, you know, for some time out on display, but I'm kind of glad it's out here now, getting a little more exposure, hopefully. And uh, it's a great piece as well. And this piece does have like the what like I was speaking on the, uh, you know, the 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 fake marble looking base it's lighter than the wood um but anyways all three of these pieces are extraordinary examples of of uh, john howe's artistry and uh you know the way he sees middle earth so it's cool it's a cool cool little uh display i think and then the the, the bottom two the bottom parts of these cases have are been unchanged but we'll run through them real quick. Even though this video is getting long. So. Go around this guy. And then we'll go down here. Anyways. Uh, yeah. if, you, if you're interested in looking at any of these more in depth. If you have any questions, you know, feel free to, to write me a message. You know, I enjoy interacting with people and talking to people about the collection. You know, and I love people to come here, examine it, and, you know, sign the guest book of West March. It's a, it's a great time. You know, this collection is, uh, is fun to manage and, and build up, but it's a lot more fun to show it to people either over the Internet or i much rather do it in person, but... I get that's not always the easiest case depending on where people live in the world, but if you're ever near Cleveland, Ohio, look me up and hopefully you can come check it out and sign the book. So we'll, we'll give another little look around here. Um, quick quick things to talk about. Uh, this week, uh, you know, coming up, if you're watching this around the uh, end of February 2023, uh, I'll be on the uh, Lord of the Lord of the Collections page, uh, I mean, or, you know, video uh, podcast this week uh, with Valkyrist and uh, Tyler McClim. Uh, just, you know, going through, we're gonna, they're going to do a collection video of mine and uh, hopefully get a little more in depth on some of the things that are coming up for the collection here and, uh, you know, maybe cover a couple more things you guys are interested in. So if you have any questions or things you want to cut, you know, us to cover, in that video and you you catch this in the next day or so please uh write a comment and maybe we can talk about it or bring it up in the uh on the podcast you know thank thanks for watching and uh you know uh like i said i i really hope you guys uh reach out and uh, happy collecting and uh have a great day thank you very much